All right, so here we are, and it's certainly been a while since I've done a ZBrush tutorial, so what we're gonna do in this one is create these bent curves using the bend curve deformers, right, and also the anchor points. So that's kind of what we're gonna be dealing with in this video, and right now I'm not gonna show you how to do this, right, so I'll show you how to make this at the end of the video, but like I said, for now, I just wanna show you the process we're actually making and using the bend curves and the anchors, and after that, right at the end of the video, I will show you guys how to actually make just these kind of individual parts here. So yeah, let's just get started with this and then we'll move on to actually creating this piece here. All right, so what we're gonna do first is just start off with the bend modifier. And what I have here is just a little bit of a template just for some scales, just for a dragon probably. And what I'm gonna do is press W to get out the gizmo and let's just zoom out a little bit. I'm gonna hold down control, click and drag and just kind of where I want the position to be. So around about there, I'm still holding down control by the way. And then I'm letting go of control and then just continue dragging. Okay, so I'm holding down left click and continue dragging and here we have a little bit of a sort of dragon scale that we can use to now use the bend modifier on right so this is something pretty cool that you can use and let's press w again i'm going to alt click on this and i'm also going to make sure that symmetry is off with x okay so right now it's on i'm going to press x again so now it's off and this is in the middle again you're going to press alt click on this little location icon here and then all you have to do is go to customize and then we want to go to bend curve all right, so what we have here, there's actually quite a few settings. Might be a little bit daunting at first. The green one over here, we have symmetry and we don't want it. So it says zero for no, one for yes. Right now it's on zero. If we pull it out, it'll be one. If we push it in, it'll be zero, which is what we want. So next we've got the axes. And right now, if we pull on this, okay, it is on the Z axis, which is what we don't want. So it's going that way, right? Um, forward and backward. And if we pull on it again, or rather push on it, we Right, we go all the way to the end and we've got the x axis which is what we don't want so we want the y axis which is what it is on right now and it should be kind of default um, kind of checking what you have and that's again pretty good so we have that and then next over here we have smoothness right something else and then over here we've got curve resolution so this if we pull it up we start getting we start to get more and more right and if we push it down we get less and less right so i'm going to pull this up and yeah i think for now that's good enough so after clicking on all of the dots, you'll notice that you have a twist. So we can twist this if we want. Okay, and I'm gonna press Shift D just so that the resolution's not as crazy there. So we've got a little bit more working there. Okay, and what we have next is scale. So we can scale this up and down and we have squeeze. And so just squeeze it on that axis there. So that's that. So what we actually wanna do here is let's pretend that the head is on this side or this side, whichever side really, but I'll say this side. Uh, now we can just move this. Okay, I'm just clicking and dragging, left clicking and dragging. And here we can create a little bit of a shape. And we need a little bit more resolution here. So what we can do is go to resolution and then pull it out. And you'll notice we have a little bit more dots here. So we can actually uh, work on that a little bit more. I'll actually push that in just to give me less resolution. Because what I want to do is click on this. And we click on this one. And I want to actually twist this. So we go to the middle one here. And let's twist that. So I know that one twist it over here right and click on that again that's the orange one here so twisting that and as you can see we very quickly create this sort of snake viper look to this um to this mesh right and that's looking pretty good as well so what we can do people kind of forget about the twist function and this really adds a little bit more dynamic or dynamism to your actual model here that's looking pretty good and again you can continue customizing this go go kind of as crazy as you want there's quite a lot of features here and yeah there it is Okay, so now if we go to our smoothing, what you'll notice is if we start bringing this up, it will try and smooth that transition just a little bit more, right? So if you bring it all the way up, keep bringing it all the way up, basically it'll start smoothing it to the point of where it just becomes a one curve. Okay, and then the other smoothness that we have is over here. If we bring this to zero, right, and we start moving this around, as you can see, it becomes a very hard edge, right? So that's what that smoothness does. It basically gives the, the general smoothness of the curves as you pull it out and in. Right, and then this smoothness here will just affect all the curves. So kind of like that. So that's what the smoothness does. Now there is one problem with this. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna click on this and you're gonna say accept. Okay, after you click on this, if you notice something, let's say you realize, oh, okay, I want this to be a little bit higher. I want this to be a little bit to the left. If you go back and you go to bend curve, it will reset the points to this entire box here. So, and now you go, oh yeah, I just wanna, uh, no, I don't want to. Okay, so what it's doing is it's taking that and then kind of replacing the entire box because now it's not uh, a unified piece, right? It's asymmetrical. 
and this box can't really encompass it like that. So in order to counter this, what you can do is you can mask this, right? So control, click and drag like that, right? And then we can kind of move this, right? And hope that that works, right? And that's not too bad of a solution. Okay, you can kind of, but you'll notice there's a little bit of wonky stuff going on there. So there's that and yeah, not a lot else you can do. So unfortunately, that's kind of it. But what you can do is you can use the anchor brush. So B, A and N. All right, so we have the anchor brush. So B, A and N. Okay, so B, A, N, N, right. And we've got move, rotate, scale, inflate, twist, pretty self-explanatory, but how do we actually use this? So let's go to move, for example, or rotate actually. And I'm gonna click on an anchor point or click on a point and then click on another point. So you can only have two points at a time. And once you click on the second point, you can now move this or rotate this in this case, because I have rotate selected and you can rotate this along that point, right? You'll notice it's actually rotating along this point here. And I can actually use this as well. So over here, so it'll rotate along that point there. Right, and you can do it on either way. So either side, right, just like that. And it's a little bit finicky. And for so for example, first point, second point, and that will rotate around that point. And you will notice that it's not in the middle. Right, so if I rotate to the side, it's on the on the outside because you clicked on the surface. So that's kind of what it's doing. So what I'm going to do is click on it and then hold control and then let go. OK, so click on it and then hold control and then let go. And now it's kind of roughly in the middle. Right. Uh, it's a little bit finicky, like I said. So what I'm going to do is click on it, hold control. And here we go. So we can kind of, you know, get that just to kind of do what we want there. And as you can see, right? Probably not the best functionality, but it, you know, it works. So again, we can use move and the anchor points will keep and we, we've got scale as well, as you can imagine, right? Scaling from either side. And we've got inflate. And the cool thing about inflate, actually, let me just click two points again here. So with inflate, if you click and drag on this point, it will inflate that. And then as you can see, it, it affects less and less as it goes down. So it affects the most from here upwards. And then from here, it's kind of like 0% and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 100%. That's kind of what it's doing. So same thing here. But if we go to focal shift and bring that to minus 100, now it kind of does the opposite, right? So this point is now being affected in the opposite way. So this is like 1, this is minus 1, right? So it does the opposite. And then 0, it kind of affects the points in between the two points. So if I do that, that's what you get. So that's kind of cool. All right, so up next we have twist. Okay, and then if you click and drag, that'll twist around those two points. Again, same thing on this side. So again, pretty self-explanatory. Just you have the focal shift, which you can change from minus 100 to 100 to zero. And each has a different sort of effect on those two points. So I've shown you how to place the points. I've shown you how to move the points. Click and then kind of just as you click, hold on control and then you can move it. Again, it's a little bit finicky. ZBrush always gives you functionality, but it's kind of a backhanded functionality where they'll give you they'll give you something and then it's kind of there's a bunch of caveats. Like you can do this, but there's a you know you can't do this and this and that. Uh, yeah, so anyway, so those are anchor points. If we go back to our scales here, what we can do oh yeah, and by the way, to delete anchor points, just hold on Alt and then click on them and they'll be deleted. So we want to use rotate, for example, we can click on here and click on here, and as soon as we do this, you notice nothing happens. Why is that? That's because anchor points only work on points that are actually connected. These actually aren't connected. It's not connected geometry. How do I know that? If I just control alt, click and drag or control shift, click and drag, and then control shift A, let's just go to the move brush. You'll notice that these points here, they're not connected, right? All of these aren't connected. So what I'll do is I'll press D for dynamic. So I'll go down to geometry. I'll go down to dynamic subdivision and then I'll hit apply. I just have a few settings here. So smooth subdiv, let me bring that down to zero because we don't need that much. Thickness, I have a little bit of thickness applied to that. Just apply that and not really what the tutorial is about, but yeah. All right, so what I'm gonna do after that is I'll dynamesh this. So under geometry, we've got dynamesh. Come and hit dynamesh and relatively lower resolution. So yeah, that should be good enough. And after that, just so we want to keep whatever we have there, I want to go down to proxy pose. Yeah, around about there. Okay, so now we've sorted all that stuff out. Basically, proxy pose is giving me this at a lower resolution, so I can use that. And now this is all one piece. If I control shift, click and drag, press control shift A, 
it'll it'll grow and now our anchor brush should work so b-a-n finally right on rotate so i can click on these two points for example here and now i can move it ah there you go right so just like that and if you want to kind of customize these points here so maybe that and that and if it starts grabbing other areas so if you notice like okay i don't want it to grab this area you can just mask it out so like that for example and there we go so there we go and here we go right so like that if we just use the gizmo here that can be a bit much as well but you can use this in conjunction so we've got that and then maybe again we want to move these two points here right so again you can't do this with the bend curve because once it's been twisted you can't really customize it again once we're done we can go back to move for example and we can click off of proxy pose and that will give us back our mesh right and some wonky things here that's no problem we can just delete that all right and because we were using quite a bit of twisting and turning and uh, you know we we're kind of stretching the geometry out quite a bit when i re dynamesh this because it was so thin uh, it, you know, there's a little bit of artifacting here. So in order to counteract that, what I would do when I was going to my scales, as you can see, it's actually very thin here. So under my dynamic, which again is under geometry, right? So geometry, dynamic subdivisions, the thickness over here, I would bump that up by quite a bit actually. Right, so now it's a little bit thicker and a little bit more to work with. So that way when you re-dynamesh it, it won't give you these unfortunate artifacts over here. So that's just one way to counteract that. And also these... So, you know, this weird stuff that happened here. Okay, so unfortunately ZBrush crashed on me. So yeah, classic ZBrush. So I can't show you the artifacting again, but you get it. Uh, basically, all I have to do is just make it a little bit thicker and that would have really fixed the problem. And also the, so the proxy pose as well, I probably made it too small of a number, which is why it messed things up. But yeah, again, you gotta kind of like move back and forth. And remember when I said at the beginning of the video that I did all this in ZBrush? Or for those models well actually i didn't do those models in zbrush i did them in blender uh, yeah before you die of shock i know it seems pretty crazy but as you can see I, <laughs> I did all of this stuff but there's just so many caveats in zbrush and they just give you all these tools but they just give it give them to you with so many caveats and so many backhanded slaps to the face where you just think why am i using these tools they're just so counterintuitive and they just make me want to kick my screen so in the next video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys how to make this exact same thing, but in Blender. And it's just so much easier, so much more intuitive, so much more friendly. And you can do so much more with it. You can edit it. You can go back. You can change the curves. You can change this. So for example, you can see how close these scales are. I can bring them closer. I can bring them further. I can't really do that right now. Once it's done in ZBrush, that's it. I can't undo it. In the next video, I'm going to show you guys how to do this in Blender. And because Blender is free, you really don't have an excuse to not use it. Because like I said, just doing these curves in Blender is a lot easier. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope it'll give you just a little bit more freedom with ZBrush. And yeah, the Bend Curve Modifier is still very useful when you're concepting, right? When And even if you're doing final stuff, right? Even like this, you can still come back and do quite a bit of stuff here. Okay, right? You've got twisting, you've got scaling, you've got twisting. There it is. I always forget where it is. There's quite a bit of functionality here, but Blender, really, there's just so much more there. And anyway, I'll end the video there. All right, and for those of you still around, you just want to know how to make these actual scales here, right? Let's just get to doing that. So all we're going to have to do is just go to Cylinder 3D, for example, and we want to go over to Make Polymesh 3D. Okay, so now we can actually work on this. And what we want to do is rename that to something reasonable, like Scales, for example. So Shift F next and uh yeah so i think this is pretty good what i'm gonna go and do next is go to b s and we just want to get the slice brush so the slice curve in this case so b s e i just want to slice some lines here you can do this with the knife brush as well i guess but for now we kind of want a shape like that maybe right so something like that and then over here as well i'll just kind of create the bottom of that shape so something along those lines so i'll shift control click and I'll just go to delete hidden, which is under geometry. And then we have the modified topology and then delete hidden. By the way, I do have my custom menu that you can download below because going through all these menus is a freaking nightmare. So yeah, so I'll press control W just to make sure that that's all one poly group. And then also I'll go on over to geometry again. And I want to go to Z remesher. And I just want to re remesh this because right now it's pretty terrible topology. I mean, it's workable, I guess, but yeah. So we want to remesh that. I guess we're going to go to same. 
So basically it's gonna keep the same polygon count and what we could actually do is go to double, just to give us a little bit more to work with and then we can click on Z remesher. And yeah, actually I do not, I'll go the same. Yeah, I think that's good enough. Okay, so we have that. Next I'm gonna press D for dynamic and now it's gonna ask me, do you wanna actually do this? I'm gonna say always yes. And so what I wanna do next is go to the actual dynamic subdiv menu, okay? And then smooth subdiv, I wanna keep that on zero just so we, we don't actually need that. What I do want though is the thickness. So I'm just gonna bump that thickness up quite a bit here and you'll notice that we have now a little bit of thickness and that is exactly what we want. By the way, all of this is dynamic. So in other words, it's not actual geometry. If you look at my active points, it's not real. Once I go on over to dynamic subdiv and hit apply, now you notice the points change because it's now real geometry. So I'm gonna undo that. I'm gonna keep it on dynamic. So by the way, shift D will undo the dynamic mode and D will just re-enable the dynamic mode. Okay, so now we have that, that's just one piece and you can kind of customize this. So for example, move and I don't have symmetry on So we can put X for symmetry and kind of move this if we want. And what we can also do is press W, Alt click on that and to get out of symmetry, Alt click on that again. And we can use, for example, the deformer. Okay, so what you can do is just go onto Control Alt, click and drag. So we have that one point selected there. And then over here under the white piece, we can actually make smoothness zero. That way, when we click and drag this up, it's a little bit more harsh on the smoothness there. So that way, it's kind of like a hard surface as opposed to a smooth. But again, you can kind of experiment with that. So if I undo that and bring the smoothness all the way up to one, now it's a smoother transition. And if I bring that all the way down to zero, we can make that basically, you know, pretty harsh there. So I'm going to press W, go back to the settings there and then press accept. That way, we actually have this and that's good. So what I want to do next is hold down control, click and drag. Now we've got that piece and I'm just gonna rotate this about 180 degrees. Yeah, that's good enough. And I'll place this here, for example. And yeah, that looks good enough. What I'll do here is I'll just widen this. Maybe like that. Okay. Then I will again, control, click and drag. And then here, what I'll do is I will, whoop, I'll do that, for example, right? And I'll do that. Yeah, maybe there. And I'll do this and that. Basically, I'm just you know re reusing the topology to make these scales, which I think is a good idea. So I'll just control click, right, just to invert that. And then I'll alt click on this button just to reset that. And here I will just scale this up just to make it a little bit bigger. I'll scale it from this area here. So there maybe like that. Control click again, alt click, alt click on that. And we can just move this down like that. And yeah, that's good enough. Okay, and I kind of want like a side panel here. So maybe, eh, honestly, this is good enough. So you can take another piece and then put it in the side here. But all I'll do is I'll just, not that, go to select lasso. I will do this. I don't know why that didn't work. Okay, and I'll just move this. Okay, so something like that. All right, so next I'll go down to polygroups and I'll say auto group. So now each one of these is its own group. Then I'll press W again, reset that, and then control, click and drag, and control, right? And now you'll notice that it's kind of overlapping here. So if I press Shift F, we don't really want that. That looks a bit wonky. So Shift F again, undo that. What I do want to do is press W, Alt click on this so it's in the middle roughly, but I do want it to be like here maybe, so Alt drag that. Next, I'll click on the customize, go to uh, Deformer, okay, and then bring this down. Okay, and then Alt, Control, Alt, click and drag. I just wanna do this. So that way it tapers towards the end. And you can do it on either end. So this end or that end, but I'll do it over here. So something like that. I'll click on that again, I'll press Accept. And then here I will Control, holding down Control. And yeah, that looks pretty good. And then let go. All right, so now you've got this nice little repetitive shape. And that's basically how I made these ones over. Uh, over here, all right? I just have a different panel, that's all. So as you can see, if I just do this, it's exactly the same thing, right? Well, I, did, I just have this extra middle panel here and that's it, so that's how you create that. And that's how you do that, that's how you use the anchor brush, that's how you use um, the deformers as well. The deformer we were using, by the way, is the bend curve, okay. All right, and that is it for the video. I covered quite a bit of stuff here, so quite a few things that we actually went through and mainly just how to actually make these scales and how to go about doing that. So yeah, 
that's it i hope you guys enjoyed it and there'll be more zebras tutorials to come as well and even a few blended ones as well so like it if you liked it dislike it if you didn't let me know what you guys thought about it in the comment section and i will see you in the next one